welcome to the Whalen Library. Thank you for coming. Tonight we're privileged to have photographer and naturalist Bob Mickelson here to tell us all about our coyote continent. Bob has been a professional photographer and videographer since founding his company, Photography by Mickelson, in 1974. He is a published underwater photographer and videographer, and his photo photography and articles have appeared in numerous regional and national magazines, including Natural History, which you can check out in the back, National Geographic, Field and Stream, Highlights for Children, Cape Cod Magazine, to name just a few. So please join me in welcoming Bob to the library. Thank you for coming out on such a beautiful night. I appreciate it. Um, this is a little bit different presentation because it's not just going to be, here's a coyote, oh boy. I'm going to get into some biology. I'm going to get into some um, defensive maneuvers that we can all do with our pets and our, our beings when we're outside in the presence of these animals. Um, remember, all of these animals are not domesticated. They're wild animals. And even though we were here before them, the recent visitors to our part of the country, um, they are the animals that, that own the forest and the, and the wild, the, the open areas. So this is a western coyote. Her name is Molly. She's currently on display at the Buttonwood Park Zoo in New Bedford. Uh, she was orphaned in Texas, and her and her two brothers were first brought to the Bronx Zoo. They didn't want to have two males and a female, so the Buttonwood Park Zoo adopted her, and they've had her for about three years now. So Molly is exactly what a western coyote looks like. She's uh, tall in stature for her body size. Western coyotes weigh about 20 to 40 pounds. Uh, they're relatively tall at the shoulder. They're about three feet tall at the shoulder. And I've witnessed this animal uh, from a standing position jump to this high. Not a running start, just, she just jumped. And she was tall, her paws were above my head. I was kind of like in the cameras down here. I could have had that. So Western coyotes were never found east of the Mississippi until after 1900. Um, coyotes, when you hear them, they don't make a normal howling noise like a wolf or a dog might do. I had a beagle. She'd go, woo, 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 woo. you knew it was a beagle hunting. These things make a yipping, bark, uh, yiping, barking noise. Uh, they don't sound like they're howling like a wolf or your pet dog, that, if it's a bigger breed dog. Not the little yippy dogs that I have in my neighborhood. So what happened was, in, uh, prior to 1900, this is the Mississippi River, Coyotes were always found west of the Mississippi. They're native to the western United States, um, all the way down to, and through, including Mexico. After 1900, by that time, we people have completely wiped out the, uh, the apex predator of North America. That would be the timber wolf. They were completely wiped out from existence by around 1900. So with no natural apex predator for all of the North American continent, coyotes started emigrating north and east to our part of the country. So first they would go up into Canada. There were still uh, timber wolves in Canada. So as they migrated north, they bred with whatever was available. And for them, in the early stages of their eastward expansion, it was timber wolves. So they would breed with timber wolves. They would breed with large breed domestic dogs like a German Shepherd, which is significantly larger than a 20 pound western coyote. The result is an animal that's not a western coyote, it's not a timber wolf. So let's compare. Western coyote has a much longer pointed snout. The jar and head is really not that big and powerful. So western coyotes will only feed in open plains. They feed rodents. They wouldn't think of going after a pit bull. A pit bull would rip them in shreds. Timber wolves feed in forest habitat. They'll go after game as big as a deer or a moose. They'll hunt in packs. They can tank down larger prey. Our coyotes are hybrid. Our coyotes have interbred with wolves up in Canada. They came in through the Berkshires in the 60s, northern New England in the 60s and early 70s. Now they're as far south as Florida on the east coast. Look at the face on this thing and the coloration. It looks like a big German Shepherd. The head is bigger than a western coyote, but not as big as a uh, timber wolf. So this guy, by DNA implantation, is capable of hunting both in an open plain habitat and in a forest. So if you think you can get away from a coyote, it can hunt everywhere. 
They're found everywhere. They're becoming a big nuisance. People have small pets, they leave them out in the yard. <coughs> People have small kids, they're out in the yard. If you hear these animals, keep your kids inside. Because if they think a six foot fence is gonna stop this animal, like I said, I've seen them perched on top of a six foot fence. Like it's, it's like it's a falcon waiting to prey. A, a coyote sitting on top of a fence this high. And just whoop, whoop, pop up there, not a problem. So timber wolf and coyote have interbred, and all of the animals that we see here in the New England area are hybrids. So a lot of people are calling these animals koi wolves. There is no such thing. I've had scientists tell me there is no such thing as a koi wolf. A koi wolf would be a subspecies, genetically separate from wolves and coyotes. There has not been enough separation in our, in our coyote population that um, Dr. Roland Coys, the, the guy who case, the guy that gave me that map and who I collaborated with in natural history and highlights, um, he's, he's the authority on canids, wild dogs in North America. He sampled 20,000 coyotes all around the United States, Canada, Mexico, South America. And his DNA analysis is concrete that the further north you are, here in New England, we have a higher concentration of timber wolf. The further south that they've um, expanded, the more large breed dog is in their DNA. So they still have the coyote in them, <coughs> but up here in New England, we have bigger animals because they're closely, they're more closely bred with timber wolves. So they've also went to bred with any large breed dog that they can get their, their paws on. So this is a, a large poodle, probably on Yatal, and they're opportunistic. It's a dog. If they want to have little ones and there's no other coyotes around, they, can, they get together with whomever is available and whatever is available. So, some basic biology. And these photos are courtesy of Tom Stack, a gentleman who, he's one of my stock agents. He's out of Florida. I have my, my photography is with two agencies, one in New York, one in Florida. Um, he has this photo of a coyote pup. Coyotes will have uh, litters of up to four to six animals at a time. They will usually uh, burrow underneath a large piece of rock or boulder. They'll hollow out a, a stump and have their den underneath the stump of a tree. Uh, they're breeding right now. So we already had somebody say she saw a coyote in the middle of the daytime. I, I find that expected. Uh, they're preoccupied right now. They're trying to find a mate. They're trying to make babies, I'm keeping it G-rated. Um, so you're going to see them all times of day and night right now. They're not, their normal instinct to be afraid of us is gone. So they're looking for something to accomplish something, and if you happen to be there, you happen to be there. Coyotes by nature will not attack us. They're more afraid of us than we are of them, although most people tend to disagree with that. So what I suggest to children and adults alike, uh, they're not gonna, unless they're hunting in a pack, they're not gonna bother somebody my size. You wanna stand your ground, Put your arms up in the air, steer them down. I mean, you are the alpha. You have to let them know you're the boss, you're in charge, you're not backing down. You make as much noise as you possibly can, bang sticks together, shake your keys, anything. Slowly back up, making sure that there's not a, a pack in there trying to route you. <coughs> Get back into your car or your house as slowly and safely as you can while keeping on eye contact. The worst thing you want to do, the last thing you want to do, is turn and run. Mm -hmm. If you run from a predator, you're telling it that you're an easy meal, and it will probably attack you. Oh, you <laughs> uh, you're not going to outrun a coyote. These things can hit speeds of 30 miles an hour for short bursts. I mean, even when I'm in good health, I can't run three miles an hour. So, so you want to be very, very cautious of that when, you're, um, when you see coyotes on the field, like you did out in, up in New Hampshire. Uh, that's an incidental encounter. As long as you don't threaten it, uh, if it has pups, give it as much space as you possibly can. Observe from a distance. Remember, these are still as cute as they look. They're wild animals, <coughs> and we have to respect their space. So I need to stay well hydrated so you can actually hear me. Okay, are we allowed to ask questions? Yeah. Well, you want to learn something? <laughs> 
I didn't know if you said <coughs> questions till the end. I was a few minutes late. Um, you can ask questions if you want to. <coughs> Ed, did you have any? Well, I've just seen different coyotes. Like some look very furry and you know strong and handsome, and others look more mangy. So, but not dangerous. I mean, so are there different breeds of coyote up no. there? We have different colorations, like you do. German Shepherd can be this tall, this tall. There's different um, dialects, so to speak, of what a coyote is going to look like. The coloration can change broadly. And even the fur, because some look like the short fur. The fur can change fluffy. depending upon the season. Right okay. now, they're they look bigger because they have the winter coat. Okay. In the summertime, they shed that winter coat like your family dog does, mm -hmm. and it looks somewhat emaciated. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. No extra charge for that. So here are a couple of hybrid coyotes. They have the winter coat, so they look bigger than what they actually are. But look at the head and jaw. I showed you a western coyote, much more tapered snout. This is much fuller, bigger head, more powerful jaw, which means they can take down larger prey. Looking right at the camera. And I'm, I'm shooting out of my car window right now, so you're not going to get me. <laughs> Powerful telephoto lens. And right after you take the picture that quick, gone. They're very, very sketch. But look at how big and beefy that dog is compared to the western coyote I showed you earlier. So here's a hybrid. I photographed this guy in Randolph. Um, I was driving down Pond Street on my way to cover an assignment for the local paper. And he was perched on a tree. It's like, well, that looks like a German yeah. Shepherd. Uh, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Take three pictures, gone. Just by stopping, I spoke the animal. But I was able to grab this and one other picture that I'm going to show you a little bit later. So this looks like a German Shepherd, but it's clearly a coyote. It's a lot taller in stature. Same coloration of a coyote, but the nose is much more pointed, much more tapered. The ears are much more um, at peak than a German Shepherd would be. So here's back to Molly. Uh, the western coyote, hybrid coyote. Everyone see the difference in the head? Do it again one more time. Yeah. Hybrid coyote, western coyote. Oh, yeah. yeah. Much more tapered snout. Yeah. Much fuller snout. Mm -hmm. Bigger head, yeah. bigger jaw. The skull is bigger. Mm -hmm. So our hybrid coyotes, um, I think I mentioned it to you earlier. If not, I'm going to um, forgive me for repeating. Uh, Western coyotes are hunt uh, plains hunters. Um, timber wolves are forest hunters. Ours are capable of hunting in both habitat types. So whether it be small game or large deer, our coyotes are capable of taking down anything in their path that they want to eat. So if you have small pets in your backyard, uh, I would be out there with a flashlight making a lot of noise when your dogs go and tinkle a poo poo. Uh, because there have been more and more reports as the coyote population expands of small pets, cats, and dogs being taken on a regular basis all around Massachusetts, not exclusive to this area, or I live in Braintree, it's not exclusive to any area. They're everywhere now, uh, they're breeding, they're establishing territory. Once the parents wean their pups, the, pup, the pups are driven out and they expand their range to someplace else. So I know in Randolph, there are four known den, den sites of coyotes in North Randolph. Uh, they've given birth to some 20 pups in the last four or five years. And they're now expanding their range, looking for their own habitat. So do they tend to be solitary, or will they sometimes hunt? Uh, they're very social animals, and they will typically hunt in packs. Okay. I have some pictures to show you in a little bit to show that. Okay. Yes, in the back. Do they all have the ring at the end of their tail? Um, most coyotes have very bushy, full tails, uh, much bushier than a German Shepherd or any domestic breed that you'll ever see. And so you can't see that there's a ring at the end of the tail? Like Typically the, not, because unless coyote. it's, um, every, coyote, every coyote I've witnessed, they're running away from me. So they tend to put their tail under their, their butt crack. So you really can't see the tip of the tail. But um, I've driven many a night, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and there goes a coyote down the middle of Carmen Street in Braintree, where I live, right next to South Shore Plaza. And the thing's this tall. A uh, big bushy tail, although it's wrapped underneath the bottom of it, I know there's no question it's a coyote. You can just tell by how tall they are. No other domestic breed dog is as tall off of their paws as a coyote. 
All of our dogs are closer, closer to the ground, a lower center of gravity. These things are very tall for their size. So they're considered to be a medium-sized dog, but they're very tall for their size. Okay. You've spoken of, of how they have inbred over the years. Now going back several decades, it seems to me that coyotes that I used to encounter were much smaller, mm -hmm. as opposed to what I thought was a wolf, yet mm -hmm. looking from my house into the field next door to us mm -hmm. just the other day. Mm -hmm. um, very large animal, and I said, that's a wolf, but our blue is Wolves have been wiped out for over 200 years. Yeah, but now, so how, when did the smaller coyote evolve? It's, it's been gradual, of course, but if I go back, say, 30 years or so, <coughs> would, would I just seen the small You probably coyote. just saw young, you know, probably yearlings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, coyotes, since they've been hybrid, hybrid since they've been interbreeding yeah. in the 1900s, have always been this size. Um, mm -hmm. they, I remember when they first came over the Mississippi, they went north up into Canada. So the first animals they bred with were wolves. Mm -hmm. So all coyotes that came in through upstate New York, northern New England, are hybrid with coyote with the wolf in them. They're all bigger dogs. You probably just saw younger younger animals, uh, could have been yearlings, uh, not full mature adults, because it takes them, like you're, you have a dog at home, it takes a full year, 18 months, to get to full size for some of these bigger breeds. Mm. So you might have seen a, a yearling coyote that can look something like a, a cross between a beetle and a, beetle, a beagle and a, um, a German shepherd. So when you talk about a hybrid, you're talking about with the wolf, not with... Domestic any dogs. any other wild dog or domestic dog that they've encountered. So, do people know? Like, let's just say their dog gets pregnant. I mean, everybody knew or something, but it may be coyote, and you wouldn't know. Oh, you know. <laughs> when the when the pups come out, and if it has a long pointed snout, which would be the dominant gene, you know you have baby coyotes. I mean, because I have a German Shepherd, and. That one in that picture did look like a German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Was that one? Was that one that mixed with a German Shepherd? Yes. <sighs> so your German Shepherd, see, re you, you really don't have to worry about it as much, because when they first started coming in through the Berkshires in the '60s, there were no other coyotes here, so they were breeding with whatever was available to them. Mm -hmm. Right now, according to Dr. Case, there are so many coyotes that are here; they're breeding amongst themselves. Yeah. So the hybridization has pretty much stopped up here. They're still expanding southward. They've, they've recently, as I think in 2016, made it down to Florida, and then now on Cape Cod. They're everywhere. They haven't quite made it out to the islands, but they're on Cape Cod everywhere. So the hybridization is done. There's just so many coyotes around that they're interbreeding with themselves. So depending upon what gene pool you get connected with as to what it more closely resembles. So most of our coyotes that I've seen look like big German Shepherds. Because a lot of Timberwolf look like a lot of German Shepherd. You've seen pictures of German, you know, larger German Shepherds. There's smaller, medium, and larger German <coughs> Shepherds. They're all the same species. Mm -hmm. Just what were they bred with? That's what determines the final outcome of size and weight and, and stature. So whenever you see something like this, you're too close, back away. <laughs> uh, Molly was looking at me saying, Molly's been raised by, by females. Um, I was the first male they ever let me. I, I actually got to go in the enclosure, this two-acre enclosure with a wild coyote. Uh, this place also has entrusted me to go in with Canada lynx and bobcats over different, different times I visited there. Uh, but they're all, they're all female handlers. So Molly's been raised by women. Molly is the alpha. Molly don't like boys. She does, but for different purposes that we're not going to get into right now. But she doesn't like men. So she saw me in the enclosure, and she kept kind of going, hmm. is it snack time, ladies? So if you ever see something like this, you're too close, especially if you see something like this. Coyotes have orange to yellow eyes. That's one way to tell you're looking at a coyote. But if you get this close, you probably should back away. <laughs> I would really advise to back away. Don't get this, to, this close to a coyote. This is with a very powerful telephoto lens with a coyote that's used to people that was still looking at me as snack time. So 
Seeing coyotes is an incidental encounter. I've been photographing wildlife for over 40 years now. I've seen three coyotes with a camera in my hand, with the proper lighting to be able to take a picture. I've seen them many times at night. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. I have nothing. I'm driving, I'm not going to stop. The person behind me will kill me. So I can't take a picture. So in 40 years, I've seen three coyotes. Those were the pictures that I showed you. So I'm borrowing pictures from other photographers that were courteous enough by giving them a credit. Um, this is a photograph by Dave Martin up in Gloucester. Um, coyotes are everywhere. They're, they're buzzing you by your cars, day or night. Here's one by Sebastian up in Gloucester. Um, the coyote didn't care that they wanted to go home, and I found something on the street that's interesting to me. You're going to have to wait. So that was probably summer in that picture? because it looks. This was summertime. <coughs> Look at the lush greenery. The coat is summer coat. It's not, um, it's not nappy. It's not very full. So it's clearly summertime looking at the foliage. And here again, full bloom. Everything's nice and green. There's a coyote running through somebody's backyard. So now you can tell people, because I told you, that when you see a coyote, it is not a koi wolf. It's a hybrid coyote. There is no such thing as a, co a koi wolf. That's a misnomer that the media, I'm not going to go uh, fake news or anything. But that's a misnomer. Uh, somebody coined that term that is incorrect. It's not a subspecies, it's a hybrid. And it's from Dr. Roland Kays. He is the, the, the uh, nation's renowned expert on wild canids, wild dogs, from North Carolina State University. So if you want to challenge it, talk to the doctor. <laughs> I'm just a reporter. Yes, sir. The other term I've heard is Eastern coyote. Is that? Hold any water or no? No. It's really just coyote. Okay. I just call it eastern to say, okay, it's east of the Mississippi, western because it's west of the Mississippi. They're called coyote. There's no eastern or western in their common name. So um, I refer to the other one as a western coyote just to make it easier for you to understand geographically where I'm talking about. But there's only one species, it's a coyote. Mm -hmm. There's only one timber wolf, it's a timber wolf. Yes. Is there a difference between the eastern wolf and the timber wolf? Synonymous. Same animal. Yeah. Um, there are some species of wolf, but in the United States, before they were wiped out, timber wolf reigned supreme. So we had timber wolves here in New England. Well, in the early 1900s, they were fairly common in the city of Boston area. By the mother. early 1900s, wolves were pretty much wiped out. What so those are. Hmm? We did. So they're they a threat. We, we're, what do we do with anything that's a potential threat? We kill it. So the, these species are protected? Um, yes yeah. and no. No, not here. No. Um, Massachusetts has laws to protect these animals. You can't trap and transport them. But in other, other states around the country, if they're a nuisance, ranchers can kill them. They're not protected. They're not, on, they're not covered under the Endangered Species Act. They're not a marine mammal that's protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. They are considered to be a, a nuisance varmint that happens right now to be the top apex predator for wild dogs in North America. So they, about 30, 40 years ago, they started reintroducing timber wolves to Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. That pack has expanded to states all around Yellowstone. And they're expecting in 50 years it's going to make pretty much the middle part of the country with timber wolves. There was a push for the past 30 years to reintroduce timber wolves in the Great North Woods. That's rent. Opposition support, opposition support, and the end, it still hasn't happened. I think it would be great to have those animals back where they belong. The habitat's still there. We're not going to be in, 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 uh, in, not going to be taking over their habitat where these animals are found up in the mountains in the, uh, the Great North Woods area. <coughs> so these are photos that Dr. Roland Kays, and again, he's a renowned um, canid expert. He studied coyotes for over 30 years. This is what he does teaching other students in Cotton University level. His research is all about this. And he told me in a phone interview, he's never seen a coyote in the wild. They're all camera traps. He puts camera traps on trees in the forest. This is where he's only seen his pictures of his coyotes. He's never seen one in person. He can come to my backyard. He can come to my neighborhood in Braintree. They're all over the place. So here's a pack down in North Carolina. 
Uh, you can see it is bigger, smaller, but they're all bigger, like the, same, the size and shape of a German Shepherd. These are not what the size, stature of a Western Coyote. They're bigger, fuller body, larger heads, bigger jaws, bigger skulls. They're very curious and very inquisitive. There's nobody around, just a box, it's a shape that doesn't, the animal doesn't recognize, and it's checking out the box that the animal doesn't recognize. They're very smart, very inquisitive, the animals. Here's a couple getting closer to the camera trap. What is that thing? I smell human. Where's the human? Are they as intelligent as our domestic dogs? Yes, our dogs were taught by somebody. This is who taught them. <laughs> These have the instinct, our animals have been bred out. These, these are instinctive hunters. These are instinctive uh, hunting by pack. Um, highly social. They, they love hanging out with other coyotes. Um, our animals, a lot of the different breeds that we have are not, to my way of looking at it, natural. Who ever heard of a cockapoo? <laughs> you had a cocka or you had a poo? Never, you know, the two of them together. So, um, this is nature going back to where it, I think it, it originally came from, but their, their makeup is different because of where and how they came here, and who and what they had to breed with along their way. So that's why our coyotes are bigger, uh, faster, stronger, like the bionic man, or bionic woman, equal time, um, bigger and stronger than a western coyote that was never found east of the Mississippi until after 1900. Here's another camera trap. Talk about coloration. This is a blackish coyote. Every color phase in the book. It's still a coyote. It just happens to have more black and gray in the, color, in the coat. So you can find them in numerous shades, numerous color schemes, just because of where they, where they originally started from. Yes? So I noticed in the photos that it's clearly daytime. And I have a friend who is convinced that you see one in the daytime as rabid, which seems ridiculous, but what can you say about that? This time of year, no. This time of year, they're breeding. So you can see coyotes any time during a 24-hour period for an end of January to early March. Uh, they're looking for a mate. Mm -hmm. um, their, their instinct of avoiding us is gone because they're very preoccupied. That's all I'm getting into, kids. Uh, they're very preoccupied, and they don't care that we're there. They don't care what time of day it is. Uh, they have one thing in the back of their minds, and no one's going to stop them. Uh, other than that, they are primarily nocturnal dusk, dawn hunters. I've never seen one in the middle of the daytime. I've seen them on my ride home near sunset. I've seen them on my way into Boston at sunrise, but never during the middle of the daytime. So if you see, you, there's exceptions to every rule. Um, Normally, you don't see them during the daytime. Does it automatically mean that they're rabbit? No. Not coyotes. Uh, other rodents, yes. If you see a skunk during the daytime, back away. Uh, if you see foxes and other, other canids like that, um, yes, there's, there's a higher risk that those animals have something going on. Um, coyotes, they're not as susceptible to rabies unless they've been bitten by one, and who's going to bite a coyote? There's not, it doesn't have a lot of competition right now. It's supposed to be another slide, but it's not. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Well, how do they react with foxes? I've never asked one. <laughs> um, they're first cousins, because you have starting, canids are wild dogs. So, timber wolf, coyote, red fox, gray fox, Northern Arctic fox. Those are the, kind of the canids of America. Uh, they're all first cousins. They're all wild dogs. Well, we have so. foxes here mm -hmm. as well as, as. And they've always been here. Yeah. Our red fox and gray fox are native to New England. They've been here for thousands of years. So if there were no other coyotes to breed with and no other large breed dogs, they, may tr they might try to mate with a, a fox. But I'm, I, have, I tend to think, like people that try to hunt fox, they're rather elusive, and if they don't want to be tapped or touched by any other animal, they're not going to allow themselves to be caught by another animal. Has, have you ever tried to catch a fox? No. It's not easy. It's not even, it's not even easy to photograph one. They're very, very elusive. 
almost always nocturnal. You almost never see them during the daytime. But if you're doing this foam coming out of their mouths, back away. <laughs> yes? So I see, we see coyotes a lot in England, night and day. I see most in the day, because I'm talking about But I always only see one, not the same one. Am I to assume there's a posse with them somewhere, or do Possibly. they travel alone? I mean, um, I, they, they, like I said earlier, they are highly social animals. Okay. They tend not to, not like a great white shark, that are solitary animals. They don't really hang out in schools. Other species of shark will mass by the thousands. Great whites like to be by themselves. They're solitary hunters. So when you see them hunting seals in the Cape during the summertime, there are a lot of them there, but they're not hanging out together. They're, they're busy looking for their own snack, and they're not hunting in packs. These things like to hunt in packs. They like to hang out together because they're very social animals. And is that their behavior that they send one out and the rest? That's what I've been told. They send one out to either. They do scouts. Yeah. <coughs> they're very smart. They're, they're smarter than our domestic breed dogs. Because a lot of this instinct has been bred out of our animals. To them, this is natural. This is all they know. So you go, you go out and report back to the rest of us. And if you found something interesting, we'll come up with a plan that will, will circle that animal and take it down, like a white-tailed deer. I don't think they'll take on a moose. That's a little bit too big of a game for them. But they'll easily take down a white-tailed deer which no coyote west of the Mississippi is capable of due to body size and lack of power in the dry area. They can't clamp down on a prey species like a, a coyote that's hybrid, it's a hybrid one that we have up here. Any other questions? Uh, you talked about <coughs> small dogs as being vulnerable to uh, As a coyote. snack, not uh, for breeding. How big a dog? Uh, Anything smaller than a coyote. Mm. Is, is in uh, there was video on the news, I think maybe two weeks ago now, of uh, two coyotes yeah. chasing a 55 pound pit bull. Because mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. we've had a couple of 50 pound poodle breeds, but we've never had them in the coyote. If any breed dog you have, including another German Shepherd, um, it's bred to be calm, it's bred to be a home dog. You don't want to pit any dog against a coyote. Yeah. You're going to be in the short end of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm more concerned about coyotes coming and attacking. Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, um, have a lot of lights on your backyard at night. If your dogs have to go out at night, yeah. go out with them. Yeah. Um, don't assume that there's no coyotes around because you can't hear them. They're hunters. Yeah. They hunt at night. Yeah. You're not going to know that they're there until your dog yips and it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you want to go out and make a lot of noise with your yeah. dogs while they're doing their business, yeah. and then they'll come back in with you in one piece. Yeah. This one uh, is a news clip. Someone happened to be on their deck, and there's these two coyotes coming out of the woods because their pit bull went in the woods. Yeah. And a, a 55 pound pit bull is not a nice dog if it's angry. Okay, and it's yeah. being chased and bitten by two coyotes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's running up into the deck. and. They have a door, a trap door in their door. I'm surprised the coyotes didn't go in the house to get the door. Oh. Oh. I was kind of like, you've got to be kidding me. Yes? Is, is their attack typical of, of, of a wild hyena, for example? Do they go for the throat of yes. the dog? They go for the throat. Yeah. That's normal with any canid. Yeah. Any wild dog, they all hunt the same. Mm -hmm. They go for the jugular. So that's why when you've heard reports from your neighbors, of there's one loud screech from their cattle, one loud screech from their little dog, and that's it, because that's all they have. Usually break the neck. Yes? Do they, can they jump high? Like, is a big fence around your backyard a good deterrent? Or yeah, you came in late, didn't you? What's that? You came in a little bit later? Yeah, I'm sorry. You yeah, um, I witnessed a coyote perched on top of a six foot picket fence. Okay, that answers that. Okay. Um, when I was in with Molly, there's a shed right next to the opening of the, the uh, enclosure. Uh, she was standing still. Next thing I know, she just jumped straight up. Her paws were taller than my head from a standing still position. So with a running start, a six foot picket fence is nothing to these things. There was a picture that was on Facebook for Randolph, um, a coyote sitting on top of a six foot chain link fence, looking at the pet in the backyard. Yeah, we have a food. 
Oh, is that a deer? I don't know my glasses are. Oh, no, it's, it's a coyote. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if you know about that. Oh, that's a coyote. I was looking at the bottom looked like a deer. Oh, well, the deer they got on over the weekend, they took a deer down in my neighbor's yard. I believe it. They had the Yeah. Um, there you go. Out yeah. on Concord Road. You know, you know oh. the tanker field to, and, uh, yeah, that's now getting agriculturally developed. The now that it's we're an open right, field, uh, yeah, uh, further uh, north, further north, further north. Um, someone has just opened up a pasture and it's plain, just as you described. And they're out. There's a pack of three I've seen. Mm -hmm. And um, oh. by April or May there'll be more. It will. <laughs> Can't we give them birth control? <laughs> Get like biscuits or something. <laughs> it's against the law in Massachusetts. Oh. They're protected in this state. Yeah. So there's there's proof positive that they do hunt in packs. They took down a deer. Well, we we have a surplus of deer now. Yeah. That's not yeah. the way you want them to go. No. Because <laughs> it's they 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 will now they know where their food is, and they're going to come in greater numbers to hunt bigger food. <coughs> What do they? What else do they eat? <coughs> Anything they want. Mm -hmm. um, typically in the wild. Mm -hmm. In the wild, they'll hunt rodents, rabbits. Uh, any type of rodent, uh, rabbits, or rodent, uh, woodchucks, groundhogs, um, skunks, fox, other coyotes if they're weak, domestic dogs, cats, small other cats. Coyotes? Huh? Other, other coyotes. coyotes? Uh, if they're hungry enough, they'll go after whatever this, whatever's available. Mm -hmm. If they sense the coyote's weak or hurt, it's food. Is it recommended that we not use bird feeders? That's for beers. Oh. Coyotes aren't going to knock down your bird feeder and eat them. Well, what happened with the deer is my neighbors had bird feeders out and the deer was sticking. Well, the well it, attracts, it attracts the vegetarians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll attract squirrels, uh, skunks, birds, uh, deer, and what do they, what do they attract? Yeah. Bigger predators, carnivores. Mm -hmm. um, a beer will go after bird feeders. So in New Hampshire and Western Mass, you have to take in New Hampshire, your bird feeder has to come down by this date, and they cannot go back up before that date because you're attracting black bear. Um, a bird feeder is not going to attract a coyote. What attracts to the bird feeder is what attracting the coyote, not the seed. They're not really herbivores, they like meat. What's the yes. lifespan of a coyote? Is it the same as a dog? Pretty much the same as a dog, a little bit shorter. Uh, they don't have the medicine and the care that we give our animals, but our coyote can live up to 15 years. <coughs> yes? When we hear that screeching at night, mm -hmm. that, is that the animal that has been attacked? That no, it's just vocalizing. That's how they yeah. communicate. Oh, it's the coyotes then? Yeah. And are they in the Well, it depends attack? upon the screech. You but can also be hearing fishers. Yeah. Fishers yeah. make a very high squeaking, squealing, screaming noise yeah, as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's not necessarily a prey. Now, seeing a fish go up against the coyote would be interesting too. Because <laughs> yeah. they both have pretty nasty dispositions. <laughs> a fish is the largest member of the weasel family and you don't yeah. want to play with them either. No. Three feet long with a lot of teeth. No. Yeah. You don't want to play with them. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes? Why were you saying that you'd like to see the timber wolves reintroduced to the North Woods? I'm a believer in um, man who has screwed up so much of our environment, putting things back to the way it, they're supposed to be. Um, a little sidebar from this, a sidebar from coyotes altogether. <coughs> um, I recently did a series of stories on gray seals and gray white sharks in Cape Cod. And uh, there was a bounty on seals in Massachusetts, Maine, and New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a short um, coastway. Uh, through the early, the early to mid 60s, we wiped out the entire seal herd from New England. <clears throat> we never wiped them out completely up in Canada. So in our, in our lifetimes, up until 10 years ago, we never heard of great white sharks on Cape Cod. Never. Because the seals were gone. What they went after for food was gone. So in 1965 in Massachusetts, in 1968 in Maine, and then federally, with an action of the Marine Mammal Protection Act, all marine mammals, all seals are protected by federal law. Since 1972, the gray seal herd has expanded southward at the rate of about 10% per year. So now, 30 years later, fast forward, 
We had 8,000 gray seals on Cape Cod 30 years ago. Right now, there's 600,000. <laughs> 30 years ago, you never heard of a great white shark on Cape Cod. Last year, Dr. Gregory Scolmo, the guy who you see on the news all the time, the shark expert with Massachusetts, counted 275 individual great white sharks in Massachusetts. Last year, one week in July, and that's what you could see. <coughs> These great white sharks are 10 to 17 feet long, and they're going after 8 foot, 800 pound gray seals. You can bite them in half. We had our first fatality last year in 86 years. That's people going, we know better. If you see a seal in the water, the seals know they're going to get out of the water. I have a photo in that particular presentation that's in a magazine in the back of the room um, of there's 50 gray seals swimming off of Monomoy National Wildlife Refuge. 100 feet away is a 17 foot great white hunting them. They didn't know it was there. If you see seals in the water, don't go in the water. Because wherever there are gray seals in the water, there are great white sharks. So even if you see the heads bopping in the water, go up to your knees, don't go any deeper. Don't become another statistic. Be smart, like with coyotes. If you see one that starts to approach you, you want to make yourself tall in stature, wave your arms, yell and scream, bang and make a lot of noise, and you become the apex predator, and they're not going to bother you. And then slowly, back into your house, back into your car, and get safe. Because if there's a pack of them, you may be in some hot water. You don't want to deal with it. And if a pack can take down a white-tailed deer that can run a lot faster than we can, the best thing is avoidance and being, being using common sense. So I, I tell students and children all the time, don't turn around and run. You're going to trigger something. That's telling an apex predator, a top predator, that you're wounded or you're an easy meal because you're running away from it. And by instinct, if especially if it's a pack of coyotes, you're trying to trigger an attack. So stand your ground, make a lot of noise, don't run away, back away keeping eye contact, and get someplace safe that way. Back to the seals and sharks. So now 30 years, 30 years from 30 years ago, today, <laughs> um, now for the first time in a couple hundred years, we have a, a, a pod of orcas hunting great white sharks, hunting gray seals on Cape Cod last year. The person who I collaborated on that story, Dr. Wendy Purrier, a seal expert, and Dr. Greg Scoma, a shark expert, both did um, archaeological digs on Monomoy, um, Muskegon Island off of Nantucket, and they found over 5,000 years ago <coughs> there were gray seals being hunted by great white sharks, being hunted by orcas. Mm -hmm. We did away with the food source <coughs> for the sharks, the sharks go away. The sharks go away, the killer whales go away. Now, you've got 600,000 gray seals peeing and pooping in the water with the currents traveling south towards Africa, and you're pulling in greater numbers of great whites every, every summer. And that trend's not going to change. It's going to keep going up. Are the orcas dangerous for humans? No, because they're up in the, they're up in the, Grand, the uh, Grand Bank. Oh, they don't, they're, they're, they don't come in close. Gotcha. Not yet. When the numbers increase, we'll see. We weren't around 5,000 years ago to know what happened. But That's right. In the Pacific, they'll come up and grab sea lions from the shore and wiggle back down. I don't know if they're going to be that brazen around so many people around here. Yes? Well, there's no plan to, to control them at all. It's just going the, to... The sharks or the bacteria? Which Any, subject? Anybody. Seals. Not the seals. The seals, no. There's a push on Cape Cod by fishermen that want to put a bounty back on the seals. Again, like with introducing wolves to North, northern New England, um, they were here first. We yeah, came later. They were, but they were here there first. has to be a balance once everybody is... Well, there needs to be a balance of everything, but we can't keep interfering. One thing I've learned in my 50 years in this field is man is very good at screwing up his or her environment. Very good at that. We've wiped out Atlantic salmon from our region. We've wiped out striped bass, many different migratory fishes. Uh, we now have red lionfish coming into Cape Cod and Rhode Island that are from the Indo-Pacific Ocean because some smarty person in the Gulf of Mexico put lionfish on a reef so scuba divers had something interesting to look at. There are no natural predators for a Pacific uh, predator. So now they're all over the Caribbean, they're breeding as far north as the Carolinas, and we're finding thousands of babies all in Rhode Island every summer. 
they're highly toxic, nothing's going to eat them in the, in the Atlantic Ocean. So we're really good at screwing everything up. So people really need, there needs to be a lot more education maybe than there is. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, mass media education as much as you can because... But it's much easier to report on political stuff and not I talk about stuff that really yeah, help people stay mm -hmm. right. happy and healthy. Because <coughs> the seals are so adorable and everybody wants but to go see them. But they're also wild animals. You need to respect their space. Under federal law, you cannot get any closer to any seal than 150 feet. If you alter the behavior, if they start moving their heads around and barking, that's a sign you're harassing them. That's not normal behavior. <coughs> if they start to stampede into the water, that's harassment. You can go to jail. They can take your house. It's been done. They're protected by federal law. Well, everybody has to know that. Are you happy that the coyotes are as abundant as they are? I mean, is that the ecosystem you're... Uh, no, because to my way of looking at it, coyotes are an invasive species. Mm. They, were, they are not native to New England. They don't belong here. Oh. They were never here before 1900. And if the timber wolf was reintroduced? They were they are, they are a natural top predator for the Northeast. So they would get rid of the coyotes? Mm, probably not, but they, oh. now they have, there's too many here. You can't get rid of them. They're going to keep expanding, but if you have a, top, a higher predator to keep these guys in check, maybe that would change a little bit. Can we import some? Can you input some? Um, you need to talk to the feds. Because <laughs> even though timber wolves have been taken off the endangered species list and Yellowstone is still protected, um, there is a place up in Ipswich, Wolf Hollow. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a really cool place. If you ever have a chance to take your kids, take it up and close with timber wolves in a two acre natural enclosure. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, they put on a really good education program up there. They're not, they're not endorsing this. Just, Really cool. It's the only place um, east of the Yellowstone you can see uh, timber wolves in their natural habitat. Mm. And we're lucky that it's here in Massachusetts. Mm. But they, they're the top dog, so to speak. They're the top dog. And I feel that they should be the ones being in that role. These are invasive. They're invasive by the meaning. They're, they're causing problems. An invasive species is one that's not native to an area that's causing a lot of problems. And these are an invasive species by the definition. They oh, no. don't belong here. Yes, Beth. Okay, so I'm sorry I missed the earlier part of your presentation on coyotes, but uh, lately, over the past 10 days, I've had two occasions where there was a great commotion of yapping and yipping, and not howling, but yapping and yipping of what sounded like at least six. And I've been told that that's when they've got a kill, you know, that they're calling other animals in. That's, that's not necessarily true. Okay. That's how they vocalize. Yes. That's how they communicate with each other. Yeah. Uh, this is also, I mentioned earlier, this is the time of year that they're actively mating. Okay. So you're, you're inclined to see more mm -hmm. chance sightings during the daytime than typically during the course of the year. Yeah. Because they're preoccupied, the normal fears of us are gone because they're preoccupied to try to find a mate. Mm -hmm. So yipping and yapping and barking uh, is normal communication skills for these animals. Well, a lot of them. Like, There's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, they communicate by pack that way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean they're found to kill. It just means, <coughs> hey, you want to come hang over in my house tonight? <laughs> I saw her hand up. Yes. Yes. So I walk in the woods all the time. And now, is there is there going to be a tipping point? You know, when a human walks through the woods, if there are more and more coyotes. Be smart. Be safe. Um, carry an ear horn. My husband says carry a gun, but I don't think... I wouldn't carry a gun. <laughs> then you have to make sure you discharge it in an area that's less, more than yeah. 500 feet away from the house. Yeah. We can go to jail. Yeah, yeah little, little things. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would say carry an ear horn that would scare the bejesus out of them. Okay. Uh, an ear horn in their direction, they're gone. They're not going to hang around and see what made that noise. Okay. Yes? The, uh, <clears throat> her comment made me think of this. Uh, what about the uh, bear spray, you know, that... I wonder if that would be effective with the coyote. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with this thought. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you with this thought. I had a groundhog problem in my backyard. 
And I had this person say, spread fox urine, spread coyote urine in your backyard. You know what that does? It attracts this fox and coyotes to your backyard. So no, you don't want to spread beer pee, because if there's one out in the Berkshires, it'll find your house. No, the worst thing you can do. They uh, sell it for people going into the backwoods. Apparently, it's effective with bears. You spray the bear. It's sort of. Next the... time I see Yogi in a, in a backwoods somewhere, I'll let you know if it works. Um, the hardware stores sell you this stuff, and they're, they're, they're taking it to the coals because all you're doing is attracting the animal who's you're spreading around your yard. And that's all you're doing. I mean, I had foxes in my backyard the next day, and there was more groundhogs. This is really like a pepper spray. Pepper spray? Yeah. It's like a pepper well, spray. that's what the uh, bear yeah. spray is bear like. Spray. It's a pepper spray, but modified with something that. See, my, my way of looking at that, like. after years of being a wildlife photographer right. and observing from <laughs> afar, is I don't want to find out if it works. <laughs> I really have no interest in finding out if it's effective mm -hmm. because I'm either way far away from you that if you start attacking me, I'm in my car with the windows locked before you can get to me. Even if you're fast, I'm faster. Because mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm that far and there's a wolf over there and my car's right here, I'm in that car really fast if I need to be. Um, if you're by yourself walking in the woods, just be smart. Pay attention as to what's around you. Carry something that can make a very loud noise. Um, don't bring a triangle, that won't cut it. <laughs> You know, an air horn. Um, you really want to pepper spray a pack of, of coyotes? No, not a good idea. You're just going to make them mad. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to make them mad. I want them to go away. <laughs> and noise does that. Back row there. Will the timber wolf be as predatory to domesticated dogs and other animals <coughs> as is the coyote? You probably, if the if the timber wolves are reintroduced to New England, they're not going to come into our neighborhoods. Um, even when you go to Yellowstone, you don't see timber wolves. Mm. They are far more uh, secluded than coyotes. They have not acclimated to people. They don't like us. They don't like the scent of us. They stay far away from us. So I know wildlife photographers that their best shot of a pack of uh, timber wolves is from three miles away with a telephoto lens. Because wolves don't like us, they're not going to come anywhere near us. So they're going to stay where the woods are open and wild, hunting moose and deer and stuff like that up there. They're not going to come here. They're not going to come down in suburbia where there's, there are sections of woods, but not enough of an area. They need a massive amount of space. space. They're a very large dog that needs a very large area of roaming, and they migrate following food. <coughs> so in the essential states, the plain states, they're going to follow a pack of, um, a, pack of a herd of elk. And if the elk move, so do the wolf move. Like with Native Americans, they moved when the food sources changed. Very similar with the talk with the apex predators. So I'd like to see that happen in the Great North Woods, and I'm talking near Canada. Uh, they may take over the top triangle of New Hampshire, but people are never going to see them. They're not going to bother us. When my mother was a young girl growing up in the city of Boston in the early 1900s, the eastern wolf, which you said was the same same animal as the timber wolf, was not an uncommon species in that area. See, I've never heard of them that late. There were still, well, when I moved to Wayland here and I had my, my first child, and we had a little patio outside our kitchen door, and I had the baby in the carriage there, and she said to me, aren't you afraid of wolves? And I said, oh no, Mom. I said, that's a little red riding hood. Mm-hmm, she says, and then she didn't say anything more. But I did find out that the eastern wolf was not an uncommon animal in the city of Boston in the early 1900s when she would have been growing up. That's interesting, because I, I, my, understanding, no, my understanding was timber wolves were wiped out by the uh, turn of the 19th century. And that's why I asked you whether there was a difference between the timber wolf and the eastern wolf, because... It's like western coyote, eastern yeah. coyote. It's the same species. If you find them in the woods, it's a timber wolf. Yeah, okay. Um, if you find them down in um, North Carolina and the reddish, they're a, a red wolf. It's a subspecies. Mm -hmm. There's a Mexican gray wolf down by the Mexican-Texas border. Subspecies. Mm -hmm. Smaller, different coloration, different stature. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the timber wolf, the eastern timber wolf, 
uh, Northern Timberwolf, it's got se several common names. It's one and the same dog. Mm -hmm. And they're found from coast to coast. They were found from coast to coast. <coughs> the ones in Yellowstone are Timberwolves. Thank you. So, so, so there would have been, I, I was in, uh, Working in New Mexico in 1960, there were wolves there. So that would have been the Mexican wolf, you say? Mexican gray wolf had a great coat. Gray wolf. Yeah. They've always been there. They're now on the endangered species list, yeah. but they've always been Mexican gray wolves. Yeah. They're a smaller subspecies of timber wolves. Oh. So the coyotes don't have any predators right now. So no. they just keep growing in numbers. Keep expanding, mm. keep breeding amongst themselves. The hybridization has pretty much stopped because there's so many coyotes around to breed with. Right. Uh, but they're expanding their range more and more every year. And more and more every year, um, in my local community out here, I'm hearing more and more reports of them become, becoming more highly invasive. More aggressive, yeah. More aggressive. Invasive meaning they're taking our pets. Right. They're threatening our families. And there's nothing you can do about it right now. What about an electric fence? Um, an electric fence? Um, he might jump over it because that would be a that would need to be a how do we say it in Boston a wicked high fence. <laughs> <laughs> that would need to be a good eight foot high fence, and no one's going to build an electric fence eight feet tall just to keep out a coyote that you may never see. Or just keep your pets inside. If you go on a path at night, <coughs> carry a log horn, carry a big stick, make a lot of noise. Well, yes. Where do you get the air horns? <laughs> yeah. um, any sporting goods yeah. store? Boating, boating Have you ever gone to a high school or college sporting event? <laughs> sure. They get them at sporting goods stores. And they're very annoying. I and mean, coyotes are very sensitive. They don't like that. So it's kind of like keeping a can of mace, but keeping it handy. So if you ever see a coyote and it's not supposed to be there, man, gone. You'll never see it again. You're pulling them in. Well, thank you guys very much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you.